Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Women Who Code Silicon Valley virtual event. We are pleased to have Stephanie Alvarez Chavez joining us tonight. She's a senior technical delivery manager. She's going to be talking to us about navigating tough times in tech layoffs with positivity and motivation. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me today. I know that it's not like the greatest thing when you are laid off. And to be honest, I have been laid off, so I know the feeling. But to be honest, I can say that it is like a good thing if you really know how to manage it. It's like everything hard in your life, right? Sometimes in the moment, you just see that little thing where it's like, hey, this is so hard. Like, how am I going to go over it? And then once you're doing it and when you pass it, you're like, wow, this actually helped me take that next step, right? It's funny because for me, tech, the tech layoff are very similar as when you break up with someone. At that moment, you're sad and you don't understand what's going on and you're like trying to pull into that relationship. And then when time happens, it's like, well, I'm actually happy that. I'm actually happy that happened and you're just moving on and everything gets better. So um, without further ado, we're gonna start. Um, I believe I shared the deck, uh, Gurpreet. It would just be easier if you help me go through the slides so that I can just focus on the on the content. Um, did you we can do it with without me? it, it's fine. The deck, or you shared it with Jody? Yes, let me get that up. Okay. I have a link. Um, not. I know you sent that to me. Just a moment. So she, she shared the link, uh, Jody, in the chat box. Okay. Oh, okay. I have it now. And let me share. Is this how you want me to run this, Stephanie? Yeah. Just so that I don't have to be focusing on changing it. Please. I think it's this one. Can you see that? Perfect, yes. So pretty much I'm Stephanie Chavez Alvarez, as you know, I am an expert technical program manager and I'm a public speaker. Um, talking today about how you like breaking up with these layoffs, right? It's kind of what we started. We're going to go to our introduction, please, uh, Jody. Thank you. So pretty much, I just imagine normally like you're in a relationship or a job that you felt that it was a perfect match, right? You get into this job, you put everything into it, your soul, you learn, you even went above and beyond. And even then you got that call, you got that video call, you got that meeting, however it happens and you're laid off, right? And how is that? How do you feel about that? It's it's really wild. After people can tell you, oh, it's fine. It's a, it's gonna be fine. Everything like right now in the tech environment, you can see that there's a lot of different tech layoff. Every single company in gaming, especially that I I come from gaming. But you know what? This is just another thing that you're gonna learn from. It's another thing that is gonna make you better and at the end of the day also it's something that you have to learn from so that you make better decisions in the future right because most of the times this layoff is not because of something wrong that you did most of the times it's because there were situations in the organization where they decided to eliminate your whole team or just that little role is duplicated or for whatever reason so there was nothing really that you could have done and unfortunately it doesn't make it easier with all of those feelings, with all of that uncertainty. 
for sure it's very, very hard to have that conversation and be like, hey, what did I do wrong, right? So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about those feelings. We're gonna see kind of what steps to take, how to recognize also if there's going to be a laid off or something so you're better prepared and how to learn from it. So um, what are the similarities between tech layoffs and breakups? As you can see, you have some unexpected twists because most of the times when you're going to be fired, it's because of something that you did, you're put on a PIP. There's a lot of, there's like a clear path on why is that happening, right? But on a layoff, uh, sometimes in breakups, you don't know, like sometimes it's out of the blue. Sometimes you're just really trying, you're already planning on what you're going to do next year on that other meeting, maybe a new project that you want to pitch your manager and boom, everything changes, right? So right now what's going on is that you're facing a major challenge. In your life. Then there's also these red flags, right? Those red flags that sometimes you see, but you want to avoid rather than sometimes people are not really that um, they don't give you as much information. You want to understand more about an organization. You're pitching different projects. You want to grow your team and people are not really listening to you or you start listening to people saying like, hey, like there may be a, um, um, a layoff. And for example, in the state of California, it is kind of posted beforehand. So you can actually go and investigate when that's going to happen. So you can plan a little bit beforehand. Also, it's an emotional roller coaster for sure. When you're doing everything that you were supposed to do, when you're going above and beyond and still it didn't work out, it's, you have confusion. You're frustrated. You are a human, even though you're one human in an organization of millions of people. It is important to understand that it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel that, hey, what happened, right? But with that, you have to take the time to also take care of yourself and to understand what happened and to go better out of it, right? We have some self-reflection time. Whenever something wrong happens to us, like a layoff, a breakup, what do you do? It gives you time to really understand, okay, was I in the place that I wanted to be? Is, it, is this what I really want to continue doing? Is Are there other venues that I would like to explore could I have done something different? Maybe. Could I have made a better decision choosing where to put my, my efforts into? So I think that's really important, especially when you're given this opportunity of, okay, so now what? I've been following this path. Is this something that I want to continue? Is it maybe time for a career change? Should I pivot into a different industry? Sometimes we learn best through tough lessons, unfortunately. These are the best teachers that we can have. It, it really shows us our resilience, our self-worth, and also knowing when to let go, right? Like, when are you going to let that feeling of, okay, I should have done this, I should have done that, and just focus on what's next. And starting over, you had that path, no? When you all have been in this relationship, if you had a boyfriend for five years, you know that you have this path, you're going to get married, you're going to have 20 kids, I don't know. It's kind of the same when you are at a job. You're like, okay, I'm here for the long run. I want to be here. I want to stay here 10 years. The first year I'm planning to improve my skills this way. And I want to have more of a exposure in this area so that I can use my skills help in this specific team. And suddenly things change. And well, you have to start over and you have to find a way that this is just going to help you pivot and do something better. Your support system matters a lot. You're not alone. Most of the times it feels like, hey, like I'm broken. It's sad. What am I going to do? Nobody likes this type of instability. But there's a lot of people right now, for good or for bad, that we're going through the same thing. So we can talk to each other. You can call someone like, hey, how are you doing? You can have a a body that helps you stay on path, that body that is going to be like, for example, you want to do that certification that you have been postponing because you don't have time. Well, maybe you can find some other people that want to do the same 
in this time and you guys can really help each other out, right? And find the silver lining. Sometimes after this is like, okay, but how is this good for me? Well, I have pivoted in different um, industries. I changed careers once already. I'm thinking about changing it again. I think it's time to to see what's out there right now. The tech, um, the tech world is changing so much, so much of the AI. Like what are the skills that you have that would work more in this new um, tech environment, right? Uh, can we have the next slide, please? So how do you recognize the signals so you can stay ahead of the game, right? Because it's always important to be prepared as much as you can. So I would say start checking out those office vibes. If you start having, if you start hearing conversations, if management start to be more into what each people is, are doing, if there are rumors of a merge, all of that, it would, it's, it can show that something is up, right? You have to have eyes and ears everywhere because most of the times, you can see, as I told you, in the state of California, they have to post it ahead of time. You can see a trend if there's a merge. Another thing is that right now, a lot of gaming companies are trying to do that. But why are the numbers good in your company? Is your job something that can be, uh, is it really, really something that cannot be changed for another person? You have to kind of follow the money as well. You don't need to be an accountant, but you can check some financial reports from your company news. You can see how is the stock going up. So if the profits are tanking, if you don't really, if they're not really giving that bonus, something might be wrong and they may be triggered to make these changes, right? Talk the talk. Um, if a company communicates occasion, somebody dries up or gets super big, that's a sign. Transparency is key in healthy workplaces. So don't ignore it if it's fading, if they're not really sharing and you see something on the news and it's not really being shared, then something might have been in the works, right? Trust your gut. That's another thing that, to be honest, sometimes you just feel it in your bones. You're like, okay, this is kind of off. Like, why am I not being here of in these meetings as much? Or why is my team not growing? And even then, to be honest, I have the experience that everything seems fine and still changes, but I mean, you can always try to, to get a hint of what's going on. And even though I, I thought I would not be impacted, I kind of knew what was going on, so I prepared for it. So I think it's always important to not panic, not be always on survival mode, but do listen to those um, signals and try to make better decisions. Uh, can we go to the next one, please? Um, so why research mar matters for your next move? Because, okay, this happened, right? We are in this situation, so now what are we going to do? Avoid brown health day. What does this mean? You don't want to jump from one sinking ship to another, right? If there are so many... If there are these similar companies that are having these tech layoffs and then they're just hiring again, you want to kind of be mindful of the reasons you want to be able, if it aligns with you, if it's something that you just want to do and you don't mind having this situation, it's fine. It's just that it's good that you do the decisions for yourself, right? So make sure that if there are like back in the days, I would think that maybe a startup company would not be as, as stable and these big companies would be. The truth is, but right now there are so many changes, especially with AI, people being pushed to go back to the office and everything that it's important to do your research. So if it's something that you're not looking for, you just know that it might not be a good fit and you start looking somewhere else, right? I think that culture fit is king. It's really important that it's not only about a paycheck, but it's really about you putting your time in there because it's your time. Sometimes you avoid doing things for yourself because you're in these companies. And also you kind of aligned your experience that um, 
training that you want to take to fit in these roles, right? Like for me, I would prioritize certain training over, over other because that, that would work in my specific role. So I think that when everything aligns, it's fine. So at the end of the day, you are in control of your life. You are, you have to be happy. You have to enjoy it. So it has to make sense for you. You have to have that stability check. Look for signs of long-term stability and growth potential. You don't want to join a company on a shaky ground unless you're up for a wild roller coaster ride, right? If there's a company that right now is going through a lot of moves and changes, is it the place where you want to be? Maybe if you arrive in a very important position, you're gonna be, you're gonna have a voice in those changes. But if not, I would be mindful and careful with that. Also learn from some other people's mistakes. Like you can check reviews, people most of the times you can talk to former employees. Their insights can give you like a real behind the scenes of what's going on with these job descriptions, interviews, how is really the culture. Maybe they will not tell you all of it, but you can get an idea. And at the end of the day, you make your own decision. But I think it's important that you do the work and also you listen to those red flags. I have, I personally have ignored the red flags and now something that I am going to do for my next role is really listen, take the time so that it goes long-term because that's something that I'm looking for. Peace of mind. Um, Landing a job is awesome, but landing the right job is like epic because you can have a job and still have all this stress, not be able to have the life work balance, always be stressed that you're going to lose that job and be on survival mode. Or you can maybe sometimes just wait a little bit more until you get the right fit for you. And then it would be pretty amazing because you're going to be able to work, enjoy, the better you are, the better the company is going to be as well, because when you're good, everything is good around you, right? Um, can we go to the next one, please? Learning from experience, growing like a boss, right? So professionally, um, try to do this skill inventory time, like treat it like a Mary knowing your skills. What sparks joy to you? What needs an upgrade? Use this time to sharpen your skills or even learn new ones that make you a hot shot in your field. For example, right now, everything I have been in, I don't know, in SaaS, in SAP, in networking, in gaming. So what sparks joy to me? What is it something that I can improve? I haven't had the time to do my PM certification because I just work too much. So right now, that was one focus that I did. I'm very excited. I've been able to finally study and have this community of people that we want to become that certification on project management, as well as I know that right now I want to investigate. I'm very, very curious about AI. So maybe I would be more keen to get into something like that. Networking in chat. Uh, reach out to all colleagues, mentors, or even new connections. Networking isn't just for job hunting. It's also about building those relationships that can lead to unexpected opportunities down the road. You never know if there's maybe a, a job role that you didn't even know it existed. That's how I, I changed from supply chain into project management. I, it was my birthday. I was talking to some of my friends and they were project managers. And they started talking to me about break management and that I would be a great fit. And for me, it just opened a whole new world on things that I could do with my skills. Self-care central. I think that you also have to take a breather and focus on self-care. Whether it's hitting the gym or picking up a hobby or maybe binge watching your favorite show, Guilt Free. Do some things to recharge your batteries for me. Uh, when COVID happened, I was so focused on what's going on and improving. And I didn't even enjoy just being able to do nothing. And that's something that I learned. And I was like, okay, so I have a lot to do. I have a lot of research. I have to grow my skills. I have to find a job. I have to do this, 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 this. But also I was like, okay, I need time to deal with this. It was, it was unexpected for me. It was something I was not it was totally the opposite of what I thought it would happen. 
So I took some time to also recharge. I was so tired. I was able to go back to Mexico, see my family that I hadn't seen in so long, eat really good food, enjoy waking up late here and there. So also make sure that you take care of yourself, that you visit those friends that you haven't seen in a while, you spend more time with your kids. I don't know. Um, reflection station. It's like journaling for your life. Reflect on what you've learned from this experience, your strengths, your areas to grow, and what you really want your next gig of relationship, right? Because it's kind of like the same thing. I think it's important that you say, okay, I really learned that I'm so good at making people together, that making people work with their basic skills. I know that I enjoy a lot when something that was very complicated happens in time and we're all, and the project happens, okay? But maybe I need to grow more on that work-life balance. I need to really grow on putting boundaries so that the next time I, I don't end up so tired. So I think it's important to, to learn from this. And also it's sometimes to take a, take a step back, breathe and, and do better for the next time. Because I know that it's hard, especially when it's about a job because we need that money, right? That's why it's really important to be careful with your finances. The moment you know that something like this happens, go check your budget, really, really stick to it. Don't be so optimistic on better to have extra money and you're like okay I prepare for this I got a job but other than be super optimistic and then be in a place where you have to take very harsh decisions right also like emotionally take take care of yourself like feel all the feels it's okay to feel sad frustrated or sometimes even relieved like emotions Emotions are like waves, they come and go. Sometimes you can be super excited and you're like, yes, I finally have the time to improve on this skill and maybe pivot into a different role. Maybe you're a project manager and you're like, okay, this is this is not something that I want to do because it requires me to be in the office. So what if I move into UX, right, for example, and then you can do remote work. But Sometimes you can be very sad. It's okay, like feel frustrated. Be like, hey, what's going on, right? Positive vibes only, mostly, right? Uh, whether it's uplifting music or quotes, spending time with supporting friends, try to surround yourself with positivity because you will, if you're sad and you're with people that are sad and they're always complaining and you just see the LinkedIn, um, Feed and everything is so sad and depressing, it's going to be hard for you to keep it up, to be happy, right? Like for me, whenever I'm I'm sad or frustrated or something is going on, I always try to wear red lipstick. That's like my thing because there's no way I look sick with red lipstick. I try to take care of myself. I try to go for walks. It really helps me to just distress. And also try to talk to people that are not only talking about that. It's the same when you are in a relationship and you're always you just broke up with your boyfriend and then you're only surrounded by people that always complain about people all the time it's hard to to keep it up right um why is this important pretty much because you're building that resilience right like a superhero like you can see that it's not always easy it's not always Fun, but little by little, making these changes, taking care of yourself, being being healthy, doing your work. Because yes, you have to network, you have to improve your resume, you have to learn how your resume works because you have to be keeping up to date. Like what worked 10, 10 years ago, it's not gonna work right now. Uh, myself, I have lived in Mexico, Canada and the States, the way I look for jobs in these different places. It's very different. So I think that for me, I'm always trying to adapt to change, to always try to learn what's a new thing. Like right now, AI is really taking over. Even your resume, the less is better, those words. I just really try to, to also enjoy this process because you have the time to really make an impact out of this. And you can even see it as an adventure. You can be like, okay, today, I'm going to be the best at doing my resume. And maybe you can even create your own network where you share your, 
your um, um, experiences. Like, hey, I did this and it worked. Like, hey, people, that's something that a lot of people that were laid off with me that were very good friends were trying to do. We, we had the chat on, hey, I just realized that there's this type of job in this place. Or maybe for those people in tech that are developers and everything, how to take those uh, technical interviews. It's important to have a good network, but also to build that resilience because there's a lot of um, rejection. There's a lot of learning. It's hard for sure. But at the end of the day, if you keep it up, it's going to be worth it. Um, also, you kind of get like a clarity shake up, right? Like you get the time to figure out what you really want. What is it what I want? Like maybe you had this job and you were like, it's fine. And then I'm going to get another one. And this is a really good push on saying like, hey, this is a time to go into healthcare, for example, because I'm very passionate about that. So maybe I just put one, two months into understanding more and even you get a better job, better paid. You can, I do recommend not to settle as much as you can. I know that sometimes you have to get a hustle, you have to get some jobs so you can continue paying the rent and everything. But I do think that it's important that to not compromise because on the long term, things like this happen and was it worth it, right? Um, flexibility. I think that life almost never goes according to plan. But when you learn to adapt and pivot, it only not helps you in jobs, but also in your in your life. The way you see it, I have always thought about it like, Sometimes maybe you just have like your eyeglasses are not clean. So you just like change it and then you see life in a whole different way. You also have to see that we are good. We are healthy, right? Sometimes it doesn't matter all the money in the world, but if you're not healthy, that is totally a thing. And always try to see the silver lining. I think that there's always, there's always something, there's always something good in anything. I know that it's hard. But when you do it as a, as a thing that you do all the time, it's just easier. I remember a lot of people reaching out to me and being like, hey, but why are you so optimistic? Why are you so happy? Uh, well, I'm not happy. I'm not super excited that this has just changed so much the things that and the plans that I had. But I know that this is a, just another change in my life. And I know that every time that I have had some struggle, then on the road, I can see that that actually made something be even better. So I challenge you to do that, not just to, to go with the flow, try to take a step back and really take this as a, instead of something so bad, like something so good, right? Um, can we change the slide, please? Am I on the right slide? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, actionable task for recovery, bouncing back. Right. So you have to revamp your resume. It's it's like a makeover time for your resume. Sometimes something that I've noticed is that especially right now with so many tech layoffs, you really have to be mindful because there's so many people going for the same role that you have. So you have to highlight your achievements, your skills, your those experiences that align with your career goals and also make the recruit that will just make it easier for the recruiters and those um, AI tools to be like, okay, this person fits this role. It's important also to work on those additional steps, like being nice to people. Don't reach out to recruiters and be like, hey, find me a job. When I was working in one of my roles, I used to get a lot of LinkedIn DMs saying like, hey, I'm interested in working here super out of the blue. I'm not a recruiter. I didn't have any job there. It's like be mindful of people's time and make sure that your resume aligns with what you're looking for. LinkedIn glow up. I think that LinkedIn is such an impressive and great tool to do this networking. To see. You can show a lot of yourself and how what your goals are, what you have done on LinkedIn. So I think it's important that you work on that. For me, it has opened up a window to also talk to other people. And whenever I'm curious about something, it's like, hey, I am 
Stephanie Chavez. I work in tech. I've been doing project management. I'm curious about what is it, how is it to be a, I don't know, UX, UX UI person. My understanding is this, what, what is your everyday life? And sometimes it's like, oh, actually, I don't think that I would enjoy doing that. Or where I would be like, yeah, I mean, how can I get more skills? Like, I would really would like to pivot into that, right? So I would totally uh, recommend to go to your LinkedIn and make sure that you're doing a proper network for yourself. Skill up, level up. It's important to always, not only when you're in these situations, but take advantage of those online courses, workshops, certifications, really diversify your skill set and make it very strong. I think that when you're a lifelong learner, it not only boosts your marketability, but also keeps your brain sharp. The more you're learning, the easier it is to learn something else. Right now I speak four languages. I'm learning, I'm working on my fifth. If I keep it up, my brain is just so accustomed right now to pick up grammar and accents and that you have to be working on that and it's gonna help you in the long term. Um, the networking hustle, I think that right now we're not in COVID anymore. You can attend to industry events in virtual or in person. Uh, one of the places that I love for sure is Women Who Code. They always have so much information courses, meetups, people. You can really start your network there and there are so many other places. I think it's important to make those connections. You never know if somebody knows of something that, hey, I found this, it's not for me, but it might be something that you would like to do. Another thing is that, for example, I myself, I love to mentor into interviews or how to, I used to do this a lot in my previous role where I would mentor younger kids that are in the university, they have never had a job. So how can you use your skills into that? How can you pivot the skills that you already have into a different role? Uh, because that's something that I, I have done and I just want other people to do it. So I think it's really important that you continue networking because you never know. You yourself, I'm pretty sure that you have so many great skills that put in the right role, you're just gonna bloom. And you have to turn it like this blessing in disguise, right? And uh, you have to change that uh, like mindset makeover of, but why me? So what am I going to learn from this? Why is this in my path? How is this going to make me stronger, right? When you adapt a growth mindset, you turn setbacks into stepping stones for those amazing things that you're going to achieve that growth, that resilience, those stories that you're going to tell, okay, this happened, but I used it like this, and now, well, no, maybe you even create your own company. Uh, you can also discover hidden passions. Like sometimes losing one job or a, or a relationship, it just opens doors to explore passions or career path that you've been always curious about. I do, I do, um, I would like to really challenge you to do this because I do think that it's an, an incredible opportunity for self-discovery. When I was in supply chain, I used to do importing, exporting, uh, warehousing, all of that. I loved it. I used to be a teacher before that. I loved it. But then I would have never thought that all my skills would be great as a technical project manager when I don't even have a, a career in tech. I studied international business administration. And to be honest, my skills in languages have opened me even more doors to this tech environment. Why? Because most of the times we are in a diverse world. So most of my engineers are in, in I don't know, in Europe, and I have some here in the States, but some could be in South America. So I can talk to them in a different way, and I can make those connections that at the end of the day, it's making them work, right, in the best way possible. So... All of those hidden passions, you don't know if, I don't know, I love to crochet. I've been crocheting a lot because I learned that when I was stressed and I crochet, I'm happy. But who knows, maybe you can create patterns, maybe you create your own company, maybe you pivot this situation into something that you really like to do. Some people in COVID, they became um, trainers doing exercise and now they have two, three, 
James, I mean, you never know. There's a, not only one path, right? Um, health, in my personal opinion, is wealth. Use this time to prioritize your physical and mental well-being. Exercise, meditate, eat well, and seek support if needed. This is a very complicated moment, and sometimes we may need the help of someone else to help us figure out what are we dealing with. There are a lot of coaches, therapy, friends. Just be open to be healthy. I think that's the most important. I unfortunately had a, a person that I really care for that I got cancer and thankfully everything is good, but it does put things in perspective because if we're honest, you can have the great job, you can be super rich. Like Steve Jobs said, like if you don't have health, pretty much nothing is worth it, right? So make sure that you do this and also that you carry on once you have this great job or this new company or whatever it is that it's your next steps. I think that it's important that you really prioritize that and embrace the journey. I think that one of my biggest um, regrets during COVID was that I didn't embrace it and enjoy it. So many people went into doing exercise and doing, I was just so focused on, I cannot go out and I have to do this and I have to do that, that sometimes, okay, it is what it is. We are in this situation, embrace the journey, embrace right now, every day. I'm enjoying so much having one hour for myself before I start looking for jobs, before I start studying for my certification, Let's have my coffee, meditate, I read a book, and then I'm like, okay, I'm back to it, right? So also remember that it's not only about the destination. Sometimes it's about that journey, celebrating those small wins. I think it is important that also when you have this rhythm, I, in the beginning, I'm not going to lie, like for me, it was such a reflex to check my, my Slack and I don't have Slack anymore. So it really helped me put things in perspective and be like, okay, it's okay. Like, I'm just going to enjoy this new way. What am I willing to compromise? What I don't want to compromise with? And what can I do right now that I wasn't able to do when I have a job? Or what if I get an amazing job and I'm not going to be able to do it in a while? Like traveling, right? So if you have the budget, now you have the time. I just came from Mexico and I'm super happy. I have energy again, I, I took some time off, social media and everything, and sometimes it helps you. And you're going to come back stronger, that's a reality. You are going to create that armor that it doesn't matter what's going to happen because right now it might be a job, sometimes it's relationships, hopefully it's not health, but you're going to start getting into this mindset of, okay, it's okay, how am I going to deal with this? How am I? I'm a project manager, so I always have to have a plan. So I was like, okay, this is going on. This is just kind of like a, a change in the scope, right? So what am I going to do? How am I going to make sure that I am okay? First, budget, health. Make sure that all of the documents, whatever, I can close that chapter the best way possible. Right. Then what is my next plan? Okay, what do I want to do next? How am I going to do it? Who do I have that can help me get there? What are the things that I can do along the way while I get that? I can start exercising more. I can go for walks when I'm stressed. I How am I going to do, deal with that um, rejection? Because the reality is that it is very hard when you apply to 5,000 jobs and don't hear back, right? So how am I going to deal with that? And it is what it is. So. Maybe you have uh, support in your, in your family, in your friends, you go for walks, you're like, okay, every, every time that I'm super stressed, like right now, to be honest, if you see how many shawls and scarves and blankets I'm making already with yarn, it's crazy, but it helps me. And at the end of the day, I'm going to have gifts for everybody. So I think that it's a good thing. Um... Can we go to the next uh, slide, please? Um, well, I think that, uh, okay, we kind of talked about it a little bit. Are we on the right slide? Yes. 
Um, so how to move moving towards a better tech career, right? Because we're talking right now mostly about tech. It's important that you update your tech toolbox, whether it's your skills, things that you know, new languages that you're learning. It's like sometimes like it was super good to do C, C++, for example. Right now it's Colant. So it's important that you update everything that you're supposed to be doing and you work towards that. Okay, waterfall was super good back in the days, but right now it's agile. What else can I do, right? Network with tech influencers. What does this mean? Try to talk to people that have understanding on how things are working, that have understanding on how better to get a job. I talk to a lot of recruiters in general, just to understand what is that process? How do they see it? What are they being asked for? Because the reality is that you can reach out to a recruiter, but if they don't have a role that aligns to you, they cannot really help you, right? But sometimes they can just take you to a different person, but you have to help them because at the end of the day, we're not experts in each little thing. Showcase your projects, not because you don't, I like a role right now. For example, as a project manager, if you are doing a move from like an international move from the States to Europe, for example, that's a project. So you can showcase additional projects aside with what you've done. That at the end of the day, what do they want to know that you're able to create a plan that you are mindful of budgeting, that you can work with different people. Another thing is that, for example, people in gaming, you can create your own little video game or something that you can show that you have been doing, right? Um, for example, during COVID, it was hard for me to get a job. So what I did, I just created my own tech company and it was about doing these QR codes for restaurants. So that was one of the projects that I put um, in my resume. So that helped me. And also, if you create your own projects, you can improve your skills with something more tangible. So it's like a win-win. Tailor your resume and LinkedIn profile. I think that we talked a little bit about it. It's always good if you can have a second set of eyes so, uh, and have the right set of eyes because sometimes people reach out to me that are coders, for example. I can give you my opinion, but I'm a project manager. So I know my territory but I do not hire developers. That would be the tech person, right? Uh, upskill with online courses. There are a lot of on online courses, Coursera and LinkedIn and so many platforms where you can keep up with the new trends, understand better things that maybe you already understood, but you can always learn more about it. Uh, leverage tech communities like Women Who Code, and a lot of other ones, they give a lot of information. They always have these people that give you a second way of seeing life. How are they doing this? Why are they doing this? Maybe I can volunteer. For me, it's great. And one of the things that I love to do the most is to volunteer because you're not only putting your time into helping your community, that for me, it's important, but also you always learn and you always get, get way more when you do something like this. Uh, practice coding and problem solving, especially for people who code. I think it's really important that you keep up doing that work because for technical interviews, it's really hard. It's like a whole different set and they're very long. It takes a lot of time. So I think that just having that mindset is going to help you because most of these technical interviews are time um, framed. So I think it's important. And also... Let's be honest, whenever we are, somebody's looking at us and we're doing something, you just get more nervous. Even though you're an expert, it's just an added stress. So when you're doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it, then you feel and you become way more comfortable with your own skills. Uh, attend tech job fairs and hackathons. There's a lot of hackathons where you can do these jobs, these type of specific things. And then people are gonna say like, wow, this person is so good. What if we we have a place in our in our team or this job first? You never know if that's a place where you were able to learn about a new company that maybe you didn't know of and they have a great job for you. As I said, prepare for technical interviews or any type of interview. I think that each interview is different, but technical interviews are 
very complex. From what I've seen is that you have to learn really how to do a technical interview aside from your experience. So you have to understand the, the processes that are some ways to practice online and everything, I would totally, totally recommend that. And even if you're not looking for a job, just to keep it updated because it, it's complex. Stay informed and adapt. Maybe right now I, I just keep hearing AI, AI, AI. So I'm like, okay, maybe there's something there. Maybe there's gonna be this new role that I can do with the skills that I have. Maybe I just get something else and I can just pivot into something different, right? Um, can we go to the next one? And as a conclusion, uh, embracing growth through challenges. Challenges are catalysts for growth. That's the truth. That's how I see my projects whenever I see a change or something. I'm like, this is this is where I shine. The reality is that whenever I have a problem in my projects, at work, in my own personal life, I'm like, okay, this is where I get to shine. This is where I'm going to learn. This is what I'm going to tell my grandkids about. I don't know. This is what I'm going to put on my resume. So if you see this as, okay, maybe I just needed this push to make a change in my life, right? Embracing setbacks with a growth mindset. I think that it's very hard, obviously, we're all humans, but we will always have this. So if you just learn how to do it, you have to learn to know yourself, how you better adapt to these situations, how you're going to use all these little setbacks that sometimes we have, because sometimes you just go back to go stronger, right? That's something that there's a Mexican saying. So who knows? Maybe this is just a time to say, hey, I'm lacking this skill. Right now I have the time to do it. And then you get an even better job. And also, maybe it's not this industry. Maybe it's not this company. Maybe it's not even this country. Maybe it's like, okay, I'm, I'm single. I've, I've always wanted to travel to uh, Canada and I, I get a different type of work, right? Continuous learning and innovation. I think it's important that for example, I'm a project manager. I've been a project manager for 15 years, long time. But if I had to stay with one thing, it's kind of hard to be able to get jobs, especially when you move abroad. So, okay, waterfall. And I know supply chain and I know teaching. I love to teach. And I'm trying to learn more about UX, UI. Why? Because something will work somehow one day. And I think that your resilience and determination is going to be what just puts you out there, what gives you that, that moment of you to be, yes, I made it, I work hard, I was resilient, I've been perseverant in everything and everything has worked. And the reality is that sometimes it's hard, but it always pays off. In my personal experience, I have had so many challenges but I'm happy. I'm very grateful for them now that I'm um, I'm older. I'm like, wow, this is so fun. Like I was in Mexico and at some point I got married. So that was kind of my catalyst. And I came to the States. I would have never thought that I would move to the States. And then I changed and I moved to Vancouver. And now I had a, a Brazilian uh, stakeholder and just decided that it was easier for me to learn Portuguese. How hard could it be if I spoke Spanish? So all of these little challenges have made me really make my life and my career way stronger. And to be honest, being always on the best way possible, taking care of yourself, is just going to help you be very mindful of your budget at all times. So when these things happen, you just readjust. You're like, okay, it's fine. Maybe I'm not gonna buy that beautiful bag that I saw, but I'm gonna be fine. So thank you everybody for listening to me. I appreciate you. And if you have any questions, well. Thank you, Stephanie. A lot of great information here. Yeah, I have some great notes to, some action items for myself to follow. Uh, we're open for questions for a few minutes. Or you can take yourself off of mute and join the conversation. I see one question here by Nicole. 
um, what programming what programming languages other than Python are most marketable? What programming languages other? Uh, well, I've seen a lot of Java, C plus plus, C sharp, uh, GoLand. I think it would depend on the role, the industry. I think, yeah, like I can tell you from my personal perspective on the projects that I've worked with, but I think that it would depend. Yeah, I also think so that it really depends on what domain you want to go, uh, you want to approach. So depends on that, uh, you know, you can learn the languages. And also I think that, for example, if you're going through Python, like what works well with Python, because it's always good to have like a lot of skills rather than only one, maybe one or two that work well together, that's gonna make you like a, have that differentiation from others in my personal expect, uh, experience. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. How do I find a mentor? To be honest, um, I had never had a mentor back in the days. And then, but I am a teacher and I love to help people. That's kind of like how I am. And as you can see, I like to help people. But for me, it's more about, I don't want people to have the same mistakes that I did, right? I just want them, if they can learn from what I did, great. So uh, there are a lot of mentorship programs. Sometimes you can find them in, in companies. Sometimes you just go and go like mentorship programs in Los Angeles, for example, and you can find them. There are some in LinkedIn that you can find as well. I'm pretty sure that Women Who Code might have something. Um, but really try to look for it. And also sometimes you can just look for someone that maybe likes to mentor or that says mentor or, and you can reach out like, hey, I'm, I'm curious about this part on your path. And would you be open to be my mentor? But also remember that people's time is important and their experience. So come up with a plan. I would like to learn from you on this. This is my plan. I would like to learn, I don't know, 30 minutes every two weeks, whatever. So I think that if you if they see you really um, engaged, they may be more open to help you out. Are there any job boards better than Indeed or Google Jobs? I think that... I personally, all of my jobs, I found them directly on the company's website. I may see something on LinkedIn or there's this other one that right now I just forgot the name. Angelist, it changed the name. That is more like for startups. You have LinkedIn, did Google, anywhere, right? There's other boards in Europe that I know of. I welcome to the jungle. But I personally have never gotten any response from those boards specifically. I would find them and then maybe get into their websites itself and apply directly. That's my personal um, experience. And another thing is that sometimes, for example, when I was in Canada, I would reach out to these companies that recruit people like contractors. When you're new in a country or when you are new in a like a specific career, sometimes you have to sell sell yourself short a little bit in the beginning while you get that experience and then you can just do your thing. See, I, I told you, we have a career mentorship in Women Who Code. So mm -hmm. I would totally um, tell you to go check it out because mentorship is awesome for the mentor and for the mentee. And just remember to be very engaged. Uh, what types of jobs do you think will allow someone to work remotely over the long term? I personally, I'm in a place in my mind, in my life, where it is very important for me to work remotely, especially as a project manager, because normally I work with different time zones. I think in tech, in theory, most of the roles, like when you code, when you're a project manager, there are certain roles that you can easily do online and do it remotely. But the thing is that you also have to make sure that the company that you choose to work for has that mindset and that has that as 
the way they want to work. Because a lot of companies, even though you can do the work remotely right now, they, they want you to be on site. So I think that, I mean, you can be a teacher remotely, you can be yeah, a project manager, you can code, you can do UX, UI, you can, and pretty much you can be an accountant. There are so many jobs that you can do remotely. It's more, I would believe, either if you freelance, then you can choose the roles, the jobs that you want to do. But if you work for a company, that company has to have that same mindset as you have. Because something that has happened right now is that because of COVID, a lot of works became remotely, but now they're changing it. So there are some, there's some pushback and and I've seen that in different industries right now. Sorry. I haven't used the blind app. There's a lot of talk about different job boards. I'm going to check that one. See, I'm learning. Levels also has a, a job section. And Women Who Code has a, a job section too. Um, they don't have a huge volume of jobs, but it's worth checking. So womenwhocode.com slash jobs, I think. Also, I would want to add to that uh, job board thing that I myself now looking for a job has been more than six months and you name it, I have an account on that job board. So mm -hmm. to me, what worked the best is uh, going through referrals. Is so whatever opportunities I got, surprisingly enough, I never applied to those jobs. I got those opportunities through referrals. So connect mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, go yes. to networking events, talk to people, and uh, I mean, uh, download this meetup app and look for either online or you know in person events happening whatever domain you want to look in uh, jobs. So yeah, I think that would be just connecting, just networking would help to uh, get a job more than, you know, creating profiles on job boards, which obviously you have to do it just in case, you know, so. Yeah, I think that working is awesome. Like right now, just by having this chat, I just learned three different places to look for jobs. Um, so I don't know what type of motivation, motivational speech you can do for someone that's been through seven layoffs at this point. Um, and this layoff is the hardest since the first one I had right out of college. Um, so and i'm more than a year out of still looking like i'm a year and four months so and i'm doing all the things because i don't have to do it it's just not it's not ending the way i want it to i'm having trouble listening to it it was a little low for me can you repeat it please just a little bit um can you hear me now yeah, I think I'm having trouble with my personal, but yeah, go for it, please. Yeah, so, so the cliff notes is I've been through seven layoffs. I'm still looking after a year and four, four months. Um, do you have any motivational words to share in that situation? What would you do in my, in my mm -hmm. situation, basically? Because I've gotten up seven times and I'm trying to get up the eighth time and it's not happening in tech. Yeah, honestly, I it, it seems like I am the happiest person on earth and everything is good, but I feel you. Sometimes you have one hardship after another, after another, and you're like, hey, when am I going to get a, a break? The reality is that I think that what I have to tell you is that you're in the right path, you're doing the right things. Maybe try to change it. Like maybe try to change your resume again. You're like, okay, whatever. Another thing is that apply for roles. 
something that happened to me is that I was applying for certain roles and I was lucky enough that a recruiter grabbed me and she was like, you're overqualified for this role, which I didn't think I was, but thank you. And she sent me to a different role and that's how I got it. So I think that also sometimes just something that changed for me too as well, because at some point I had rejection after rejection after rejection. I think it's important to have those personal, create your own, you have to have a, a routine. Sometimes it's hard to just wake up and do stuff because you don't have to, right? But it helps your body, trains yourself to, you know, I, don't, um, I don't know, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Maybe you wanted to lose weight. Maybe you wanted to be healthier. Maybe you wanted to learn something. Try to have those small wins. I think it's important. So you see that, I mean, you're still in the game, right? How do you continue looking for a job and how do you make that change? Maybe go for the roles that you may not normally go and that's the role that would be for you that sometimes you're like, maybe I don't have all of the qualifications. Something that someone told me at recruiter was that they never hire someone that is 100% because then it becomes overqualified. So I was like, huh. Oh. So they always want someone 20, 30% that can learn more. Another thing that people look for in interviews is someone that is adaptable, right? Someone that is going to work well in a team. Also, I mean, tech, it's an amazing place. I love tech, but tech has so many different places. Like you can be in gaming, you can be in SAP, you can be in healthcare, you can be like, try to maybe have a different, like, honestly, like tech could even make or shape patterns or something. I mean, you never know how you can put two things together and be like, hey, this is gonna work out for me. Another thing is that you can maybe explore different career paths, like make a list. I have some something that I love to do and that's a personal thing of mine. I love to write articles. I like to write a lot. I have always enjoyed doing that. And I never did it because I thought I was not good enough. I never took like a, a course to do it. And I just started doing it for myself. And I've learned, I've improved. People like it. I actually have been asked to write some articles for some people. So you don't know, maybe something that you don't think that you're even that good. You're actually good. Something that I like to do is to write articles about my experience and things that have happened to me so people can learn from it. Maybe you can find a passion that you have and make it into a career. And just remember that you're amazing. You're in the in this process. And just the fact that you keep trying, that's a win. And that just shows how resilient you are and how beautiful you are and how unique you are. Because a lot of people would just give up. And I know that sometimes it's easy to say, but you're healthy and that is everything. And also like maybe sometimes just open up a little bit. What if I do not take, what if I try something else? Meanwhile, what if I, I start going more to these uh, groups like Women Who Code that you listen to other people and also then you don't feel like it's only on you. You're like, okay, this is a kind of like hard times. Like this is maybe not all on me. What can we do? Maybe you start talking to other people and all of these people come up together and you create your own hustle. So I think that you're on the right track. Every day, remember how beautiful you are. Take care of yourself. You're healthy. Do, for me, boxing works a lot because I just take all my stress out of it. And then I crochet. So I'm that kind of weird person. <laughs> I love to cook. I don't know, maybe do YouTube videos of people do money out of like TikToks and stuff. Like find that fun hustle that maybe doesn't pay off, but maybe gives you that little oomph in the day of, okay, it's fine. I got 20 rejections today. It's okay. I'm going to go play Fortnite with my brother and my husband and we're going to do the best quest and then I'm going to be relaxed. And the next day is another day. Every day, there's always something that my, my dad would say is that there's always people that are uh, worse than you, but there's always people that are better than you. And that's always. So look up, look down and see for yourself what's better. Also see like, sometimes we don't see it, but we have accomplished a lot more than sometimes we, we say. Like for me, I am very upset at myself that I only speak four languages. By now, I wanted to learn at least seven. And people tell me, well, I don't even speak two. But for me, I would put that worry on myself. 
So also be, be nice, be kind to yourself. And I send you a very big hug. Thank you, Stephanie, for this amazing advice. I love the boxing idea. Yes. Um, because the boxing is going to change your life. Yes, yeah. I can totally imagine it's taking off the mental load. <laughs> Yeah, I did a physical sport like fencing because I did it in college. Um, but I can't do that because I had knee surgery. Oh. So like the physical access like that I've had for all my layoffs is now gone. That outlet is gone. But another thing you guys might not know of is never shirt your loan. Have you guys heard of that at all? Can you type that in the chat? Sure. Like you, they divide you into like um, job councils to help search. Uh, for some people, it's worked better than others. Um, I'm going through the process again because my first group was a dud, which happens. But for some people, they've been able to find jobs. So, and it's on LinkedIn, like you can find that on LinkedIn, or if you Google, there's like a whole site that sends you through a whole job search process. That's a little bit different than going in it by yourself because I have gone it by myself several times. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you for some sure. great information. We will send out the link to your slide deck um, when we get this video published. We'll send out the link to both of those. And honestly, we're not in this alone. There's so many people. Let's just embrace this. Let's see how can we come together and help each other out. I have learned that. I used to do everything by myself I'm, I'm the first child. So I learned that I have to be doing everything. And it's so true. Like, it's just easier sometimes to just talk to someone else. You can have a different mindset. Maybe you think you're doing the best you can in your interviews and someone can come and, hey, actually, this sounds kind of weird. You're coming off at, as this. Or, so if you need anything, I, I don't have all the answers, but I can listen to you. You have my information. Thank you, Jody. I love Thank to be you. a part of this, um, of this community. And check out places like Women Who Code because they have so many resources and you don't feel alone. You learn so much. You get that energy back. And I hope I can listen to your success story soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know there was a lot of talk about mentorship and that is an initiative that we're trying to spin up for the Silicon Valley network is to do our own type of um, mentorship so there will be some information coming out and probably some meetups about how that's going to work so thanks everyone thank have a great night thank you everyone see you at the thank next you. event